Joining us uh, as moderator is uh, Breakthrough Prize Foundation uh, head, uh, Dr. Warden, uh, Dr. Pete Warden. Uh, prior to joining the Breakthrough Prize Foundation, uh, Dr. Warden was director of NASA's Ames Research Center. He was a research professor of astronomy at the University of Arizona. He is a recognized expert on space and science issues and has been a leader in building partnerships between government and private sector internationally. And now I'll go ahead and turn it over to uh, uh, Dr. Warden if he, is, uh, if he is with us and ready to go. Can you all see me and hear me now? You're good to go. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Great. Well, uh, uh, Brian, thanks. It's, uh, it's very exciting uh, listening to, to Ken this morning. I think he set the stage uh, very, very well. Uh, as noted, I've uh, got a diverse history and can't keep a job. Uh, but uh, I would like to talk a little bit, uh, just an introduction. And uh, uh, we have a great uh, set of panelists today, which I'll introduce here in just a moment. Uh, you know, I've, uh, I've worked... Uh, uh, for a good bit of my career for the military and uh, uh, and then I worked for NASA for uh, about a decade and then the last uh, six years I've worked for the private sector in a uh, philanthropic foundation uh, the uh, there's a lot of uh, you know I, I think particularly when I was at NASA Ames for almost a decade uh, we had a number of, uh, of very successful startups uh, and I, I'm sure I'll leave some out but I'll include people like Planet uh, Made in Space uh, Spire, uh, Astro's launch vehicle company, and, and others. Uh, and there's an interesting thing that I'd, you know, just kind of like to throw out on the table, which I think is would be very useful for discussion. Is uh, I, I find that virtually none of these people started these companies because they wanted to make money. Uh, you know, the traditional thing is well, people go into business to make money. Uh, all of them had uh, a number of, uh, of of different motivations. And uh, uh, I'd like to briefly review the kind of motivations that I, I see for people, and we'll get into our, uh, our panelists. But uh, uh, and, 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 and I want to give due credit to Rick Tomlinson, who came up with uh, at least three of these. But I see there's sort of four motivations. And you find that the founders of these successful enterprises uh, all have one or more of these motivations that, that really are, are probably their top motivation. The first one I'll, I'll call political, uh, but it's uh, it's uh, sort of uh, uh, you know really related to the to nationalism and the greater glory of the fatherland. Quote Tomlinson, and he named it after Werner von Braun, who, uh, as we all know, sort of changed the fatherland once. But uh, it's certainly a very important motivation. The second one, uh, the second motivation, and. Uh, I have to confess to being kind of partial. This one is uh, a scientific that, that we're going into space to to uh, to gain new knowledge and uh, and find out about uh, you know science. And uh, uh, probably the typical proponent of that was Carl Sagan. Uh, the third one is uh, what I really call a betterment of life uh, on Earth or betterment of the human condition. Uh, and uh, uh, using space to help uh, uh, make life better both on Earth and then eventually in space. And probably the key proponent of this was uh, Jerry O'Neill with his space colonies. Uh, and I want to emphasize that, that uh, this particular motivation seems to be a very strong one with some of the very famous entrepreneurs like Elon Musk and, and, and Jeff Bezos. Uh, and I'd like to propose a final one, which... Uh, Quite frankly, I think is is going to be my big motivation, or it has been. Uh, and, and in fact, I have to give a shameless advertisement for a book that a colleague of mine, uh, Matt Daniels, and I are finishing. Uh, and it's uh, it's really about uh, a cultural issue that that uh, space is all about a continuous frontier and looking into the unknown and exploring. Uh, and this is a probably as a for for the best proponent of this is a is a guy I got to know pretty well before he died was Arthur C. Clarke. Uh, but I see that all of the entrepreneurs that that uh, that uh, have been successful have one or more of these motivations. And if you talk to them, these are what they talk about more than the, the making money. Uh, so with that, let me, that brief introduction, let me sort of quickly uh, introduce our panelists. And uh, we'll ask each panelist to speak for about uh, 15 minutes and then have a, a panel discussion potentially uh, uh, we can have some audience participation. Uh, the first panelist, uh, uh, when I'll, I'll introduce all of them before we start, is uh, Rick Sturdivant. Uh, he's a PhD from the University of California at Santa Barbara. 
I joined the Air Force History Program in 1984 and came to the Air Force Space Command in 1985. He's currently the Deputy Director of History by Headquarters U.S. Space uh, uh, Operations Command, Colorado Springs. He's a fellow of the uh, American Ast Astronautical Society and a series editor for the International Academy of Astronautics History Symposium Proceedings. The second uh, 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 panelist is Roger Launius. Uh, he's the principal of Launius Historical Services. Between 1990 and 2002, he served as chief historian for NASA. Uh, from here, he moved to Smithsonian Institution's uh, National Air and Space Museum, where he most recently served as associate director for co collections and curatorial affairs. He's the author, most recently, of the Smithsonian History of Space Exploration from the Ancient World to the Extraterrestrial Future. Our third panelist is, uh, is uh, Dr. Uh, Wendy Whitman Cobb. Uh, she's the associate a professor of strategy and security studies at the U.S. Air Force School of Advanced Air and Space Studies. Her research focuses on the political and institutional, institutional dynamics of space policy, public opinion uh, of space exploration, and the influence of commerce on spaceflight. Her latest book, Privatizing Peace, How Commerce Can Reduce Conflict in Space, was published last summer. And finally, uh, Dr. Diganat uh, uh, Pakowski is a researcher and lecturer at the Department of International Relations, Hebrew University in Jerusalem, and a non-resident scholar at the Space Policy Institute of the Elliott School for Foreign Affairs, George Washington University. She also serves as, as a vice president at the International Astronautical Federation on behalf of the Israel Space Agency. In 2017, Cambridge University Press published her book, The Power of the Space Club, considered by many as a fundamental reading for global space policy researchers, practitioners, and decisions makers. Well, without further ado, if I can turn this over to uh, uh, to uh, Dr. Sturdivant and uh, look forward to hearing the panelists. 